hello uh, and welcome to you all, um, both here and in, uh, uh, both here in person and uh, attending online. Uh, to the 300 or so uh, people attending online, uh, thank you very much for for being with us. My name is uh, James Wilmot from Forum Europe, and it's our pleasure to host you uh, here today for this discussion on uh, this vitally important topic of uh, our children's safety uh, online. It's the first time that we've addressed this issue uh, with uh, a dedicated focus uh, for quite a number of years, uh, although through our work on the DSA and our data privacy conferences we have uh, touched on the subject. Um, but as I say, this is the, uh, th well, this, this event seeks to uh, support the work of uh, legislators, NGOs and industry uh, to tackle many of the very uh, somber issues, frankly, that will be covered uh, today in, in a dedicated fashion and takes place, as you know, uh, better than me, following the, uh, the recent release of the European strategy for a, a better internet for, for kids and the proposal for regulation to prevent uh, um, and combat child sexual abuse. So I'm grateful for you uh, uh, for being here, uh, again to those online, uh, and also to all the speakers and the moderators uh, who are taking the time to intervene today, uh, and in particular both to the Vice President, uh, who's uh, here already, thank you, uh, and to the Commissioner, um, who speaks a little bit later for their presence with us. Um, so, a uh, few housekeeping um, points. In terms of audience interaction, for the participants in the room, uh, if you'd like to make comments or ask questions, you can use the old-fashioned um, approach of raising your hand. Um, uh, thank you. Um, and we'll bring you a microphone. Uh, and for those attending online, um, welcome once again. And uh, you have the chat function, which will be on the right-hand side of your screen, uh, from where uh, you'll be passing your comments and questions. Uh, we'll be passing the comments and the questions to the moderators uh, throughout the day, uh, so they can form part of the, the discussion. We are not distributing any printed delegate handouts. Uh, however, you should have all received uh, an email from us earlier today which provides details of the program. That's also available on the website, uh, the speakers, uh, the sponsors, and any other uh, relevant uh, electronic information. If anyone hasn't had this, just let us know. We can resend it. Uh, for those online, uh, you will have all this information in front of you on the uh, virtual events platform. But again, uh, any problems, and you can use the, the chat tool uh, to let us know. And we'll, uh, we've got colleagues on there who will respond. Uh, quickly to any queries that you might have. Uh, my big thanks to the conference sponsors, uh, ISFE, Microsoft, uh, TikTok, uh, Yachty and Meta for their support of this forum discussion. This event wouldn't have been possible uh, without them. The Wi-Fi network is Sofitel uh, and it doesn't need a password but I think it does ask you for your uh, email address. Um, and the hashtag for the event is uh, Child Safety Online EU. So you can get in, uh, involved in the discussion there also. So with that, uh, thank you again for being with us. Very much appreciated. And I'll hand over now to uh, Claire Marie, uh, who will moderate the uh, opening session. So thank you. Thank you so much, James. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, it's my pleasure today to be moderating um, this morning's session, uh, where we will be talking about ensuring a positive online experience for children, focusing a lot on child safety by design, but also responsible use of children's data and age-appropriate content. And uh, my name is Claire Marie Healy, for those who don't know me. I'm uh, um, an EU digital expert. I previously worked at uh, Think Tank and also in the tech and technology industry, working on topics like um, identity. And I'm very pleased to be moderating this morning session uh, today. And um, I also have the pleasure to have next to me today uh, for the opening keynote speaker, um, a very distinguished speaker, Mrs. Uh, uh, Drouraska Switcha. And my pronunciation is perhaps not the right one, so I apologize. I have to practice more on that one. And uh, you are the vice president of the commission responsible for demography and democracy. And uh, in your remit, you also have, you know, you're leading the work of the Commission on Deliberative Democracy and the Conference on the Future of Europe, giving people a say on how the EU is run and, and what it does. You also have been in charge of the first ever comprehensive EU strategy on the rights of the child, adopted in March 2021 which called for an update of the 2012 Better Internet for uh, Children strategy. 
So uh, please uh, allow me to uh, ask you all to give a warm welcome to uh, Mrs. the Vice President for her keynote opening speech. Good morning to everybody, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, dear Deputy Prime Minister. Someone told me that uh, he is with us this morning online. So, first of all, I am pleased uh, to open this event on a very timely and important topic, uh, children's rights in the online world. A safe, secure and trusted digital space is a cornerstone of European digital society also for children. All of us know that children are digital natives. They play, create online, they learn, they interact. All this starting from an increasingly younger age. One fifth of the European Union's population is under 18 years old, and the digital environment is becoming increasingly important across most aspects of children's lives. The time children spend online almost doubled between 2010, uh, 2010 and 2020. In many countries, a majority of children report to use their smartphones daily or almost all the time. Half of European children aged 9 to 16 using the internet to visit social networking sites daily or even more often than that. The past 10 years have seen the emergence of unprecedented opportunities for children for digital education, entertainment, social contacts and active participation in society. However, opportunities also come with risks, as all of, all of us know. Access to violence, cyberbullying and online sexual abuse or children as consumers. There is the impact on the mental health also. The COVID-19 pandemic has seen a steep rise in children's presence online, a shift to increased online education. It has also deepened the digital divide for children from disadvantaged backgrounds in rural and remote regions or for those lacking connectivity. Therefore, the rights of every child must be respected, protected and fulfilled in the digital environment. Last year's United, Gener United Nations General Comment 25 established that children's rights offline also apply online. The European Union Declaration on Digital Rights and Principles for the Digital Decade underlines child protection and empowerment. Every child in Europe and the world deserves to thrive in a safe digital environment and enjoy their digital rights in full, irrespective of geogra their, their geographical, economical or personal background. Therefore, online content and services should be accessible, affordable, age-appropriate, informative and entertaining at the same time, and created in respect of children's best interests. In this vein, the Commission adopted on the 11th May of this European Year of Youth, a package of initiatives for children under my leadership, as you already said, moderator. This were the new European strategy for a better internet for kids and the proposal for a regulation to prevent and combat, combat child sexual abuse. I will now focus on uh, the better internet for kids strategy as my colleague, Commissioner Johansson, will speak to you later today about the legislation to combat the online child sexual abuse and exploitation. Dear participants, we need to ensure that our young population has easy, safe and non-discriminate access to digital technology and acquires the digital skills and awareness to make sound digital choices. The new Better Internet for Kids strategy builds on the Commission's more than 20 years of experience of child online protection and successes such as Safer Internet Day. It is the digital arm of the European Union strategy on the rise of, child, of the child strategy, which was adopted last year in March, and it reflects the proposed digital principle that children and young people should be protected and empowered also online. It also responds to a call for increased protection of minors online from the European Citizens' Panels in the Conference on the Future of Europe. 
with three pillars of safer digital experiences, digital empowerment and active participation, our strategy wants to protect, to empower and to respect all the children online in Europe, regardless of age, ability and background. We have started our work with over 70 consultations with a diverse range of children across, uh, across Europe. Many children reporting seeing inappropriate, harmful and illegal content online, such as pornography, hate speech, sexual harassment or promotion of self-harm and violence. And we propose to tackle these issues because in the digital decade, every child deserves to thrive in an age-appropriate digital environment with no one left behind. The adoption of the Better Internet for Kids strategy followed the political agreement on the Digital Services Act, Services Act where the protection of minors is one of the cornerstones of the new rules. Under the Digital Services Act and in line with our audiovisual media services directive and the general data protection regulation, we leave, we will soon launch a comprehensive European code of conduct on age-appropriate design to ensure the privacy, safety and security of children online. Despite existing laws, age verification mechanisms are still often ineffective. European-wide systems to allow privacy-preserving and secure digital proof of age are technically possible and urgently needed. In our consultations, children also called for improved media literacy and online safety education so they can better navigate the digital ocean, if I may say so, through the European a union funded safer internet centers, the Better Internet for Kids Youth Ambassadors and the Better Internet for Kids portal. We will help children, but also teachers and parents to become digitally confident and digitally competent. The centers will address the digital divide in skills by paying particular attention to children with special needs or from disadvantaged and vulnerable backgrounds, such as migrants, refugees and children in poverty. The recent Eurobarometer for the European Year of Youth shows that today's children want to use technology to express themselves and influence the world around them. We should all actively involve children when developing and evalu evaluating uh, digital policies, products and services. With our new strategy, we especially invite industry to actively pursue a co-creation process with children. Children's participation will continue under the new strategy, Better Internet for Kids Plus. Young people are preparing the program of this year's Safer Internet Forum in October, and every two years, children will evaluate this strategy. We have also, we have also just published a child-friendly version or better internet for kids. I hope uh, you received this on your desk. So uh, this is child-friendly version, which was developed also with children. Uh, and I'm really proud of this. This is not the first child-friendly version of document. So we are starting to, uh, to uh, we are starting to uh, edit uh, children versions on different documents because we, want, we think that we have to be closer to our children, of course. Dear ladies and gentlemen, online protection and digital empowerment are global challenges. All of us know that the Internet uh, knows no borders. By joining forces with international partners, we want to address these issues effectively and efficiently, and we want to promote our European values, encouraging high safety standards and children's empowerment and active participation worldwide. Through the Global Gateway, the European Union will help partner countries address the digital divide in connectivity and also in education. Our upcoming Youth Action Plan will drive forward our commitment to boost your participation in shaping European Union's foreign policy and provide a comprehensive approach to global youth engagement and empowerment for next five years. So we want also to act globally beyond European Union borders. In conclusion, 
I would like to take this opportunity to reiterate European Union's wish to enhance our continued cooperation with partners globally to ensure that our children are safely and that they, that they can skillfully navigate the online world. Our plans are concrete and they are very ambitious. And I look forward to hearing your views and uh, wish us all engaging in discussions. Thank you. Many thanks for this uh, very informative opening uh, keynote speaker. I think you have been uh, very busy in the past since you've started your mandate in 2019, <coughs> and those uh, recent proposals you, you've released are really important, as you said, uh, not only for society in Europe, but also globally. As I say, we need to uh, really make strong decisions on how we can improve the, uh, and provide a positive opportunity online for children. In, um, in your keynote speak, you, you mentioned uh, quite a lot this aspect of co-creation and um, several times you, you, you mentioned the importance of children's and, and young people's participation in, in political and democratic life. So what has uh, been the role and the input you receive from young people uh, in this development of the recent uh, Best Internet for Kids strategy released uh, last month? First of all, uh <coughs> Our basic document is European Union strategy for the rights of ch child. This is, uh, as we said, uh, it was adopted last year in March. And then we started developing on the basis of this strategy and better internet for kids is one arm of this strategy. Mm -hmm. What is our policy? Our key policy is that children, kids should participate from an early age because they have to become... Um, Ident uh, they have to become European citizens, they have to identify themselves as Europeans, as those who can uh, take part in democratic life. This is the reason why during the conference on the future of Europe, we also included children in our deliberations. Because we think that uh, we are talking now about uh, next generation EU, recovery and resilience plans, uh, future of Europe, but how can we create our Europe without taking children into account because we are talking about their future. Mm -hmm. So we have, how can we act and talk about them without, without them? <laughs> so this is the reason why we are promoting participation. And this is uh, one of the pillars of European Union strategy for the rights of children. So as I said, we, uh, 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 we, there were more than 10,000 children who took part in public consultations on the strategy. Uh, the same applies to this uh, Better Internet for Kids, because we think that we have to listen to them and to, of course, as I said, to leave no one behind. This is not only, this, this is not slogan, but we don't want to leave anyone behind in Europe, because when I talk about connectivity, then there are uh, first poor families, then you have remote regions where they are not connected. They, don't, they can only dream about 5G. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they can only dream about uh, broadband internet. And this is why we also act, I'm active, actively involved in um, uh, rural vision strategy. So strategy for rural areas. Because we think that citizens and children in rural areas have to have the same standards as children in big... Uh, uh, in big metropolitan areas, and this is what we are doing. This seems a little bit um, utopistic, but it's not. You know that we have cohesion policy, and what the, ver the very word cohesion means that we want Europe to be evenly developed. And this is the reason why um, we are trying to make a kid in Brussels and kid in uh, somewhere in the maybe in the north of Finland. Uh, to have same possibilities, same, and this is something which we are trying to, to promote. So for better internet for kids, of course, connectivity is the most important, but uh, the importance lies on us, politicians, um, how to educate mm -hmm. not only children, but parents, but also teachers, because, you know, you have to 
teachers also, uh, they graduated 20, 30 years ago. They also have to continue their lifelong learning and they have to be adapted to new technologies, to new TikTok and uh, Meta and so on. So this is something which we have to take uh, into consideration. I have to, on personal basis, I was once uh, for two terms mayor of the city of Dubrovnik in Croatia. And at that time, it was 2001 to 2009, we started uh, establishing um, children councils, children mayor, and they were pretending and they were voting for mayor and they were also debating. So this part, now I am putting this into, into my strategy, but in fact, I think every, everybody should follow this example as early as from crash and uh, kindergarten. Great. Um, it's really important what you said, the education part, and what you just showed us, this brochure on you know, a kid-friendly version of your strategy is a great example of putting in practice what you're preaching for. And I actually invite everyone to look at it and to also print it for their, fr for their kids. It's really well done. Uh, congratulations on this idea. And I hope we have also young people on the line. I don't see so young. I mean, I see young people in the room, but not children yet, <laughs> yet invited to Forums Europe conference. But I hope online we have some people also want to ask questions later. Uh, what I forgot to say, sorry, uh, only one. Uh, uh, I forgot to mention uh, big uh, companies. We have to work also with them because it's not only profit. They have to take, this is what I also said in my, in, they are also very important in this chain. If we don't have them with us, then I'm not sure whether we will manage to uh, succeed in it. So big companies, uh, I don't, want to mention them now, but they are also very important and we are also working with them. This is the reason why I mentioned the Digital Services Act. Mm -hmm. Sure, it's important to work with everyone, as you said, children, parents, teachers, but also companies, big but also small ones, because harm happens yeah. not only on big platform rights, it happens, uh, it can also happen in small ones. Um, as a parent, I must say, it's really difficult to follow all those platforms, what's going on, what your kids are doing, and also kids want to have the liberty to do things without their parents all the time on their back, so you have to find the right balance here. Anyway, that's my little personal note here. You, you mentioned also a lot this inclusion aspect here. It's really relevant for you and the commission here to you know, ensure you know, connectivity and the opportunity that digital technology uh, provide to young people everywhere in Europe and across social groups, poor family, also the Roma, the Roman community, remote areas and rural areas. Um, but can you also explain perhaps what you're doing in regard to the protection against the risks that can fall, uh, you know, what those children can fall victims to? So not just the opportunity, but also the risks. As I said, there are big opportunities during COVID. We realized how important it was to be digitally connected. Uh, we live in, in, in the age when you don't ask someone uh, where you are, but how well you are connected. This, is, this conference shows this too. So digital connectivity is very important, but it comes, as, I, as you said, with opportunities, but also with challenges. And this is the reason why we are enacting these strategies and this new regulation on sexual, against sexual abuse in order to prevent this. And uh, we also, this, this will, I hope my colleague Commissioner Johansen will tell you more this afternoon, but we established a new agency or mm -hmm. office which will control all, all this under the roof of Europol. So this is something we are doing very concrete, but maybe she will explain yes. this in detail. I want to speak because I don't want to double this. So we are working a lot on this. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, also GDPR and the uh, commission is really trying to cope with all this. But it's not always when I say that we want to act globally, it's not easy. It's not only Europe. The world is a village. So we have to work with American companies, with the with, uh, Far East uh, people. So this is not an easy task. Us, so everything is somehow interconnected and uh, it's not always easy to achieve the results but we have to be cautious and as I said profit is not the only uh, goal <laughs> I hope <laughs> also for European Union and we want to be leaders in also in children rights in all this and this is the reason why we want to make others follow our examples 
and others don't have standards as we have. And this is what I have to uh, highlight uh, here this morning. The, this is the reason when we, said, when we say that we want, want to act globally, we want others to follow, but of course there is the United Nations who also act. Uh, there are different uh, organizations which act and yeah. that's it. Yeah, Europe is leading on many um, aspects and when it comes to, uh, you know, regulating and <laughs> promoting some standards. So I might, we might see, a, like we say now, very commonly, a Brussels effect perhaps in this field as well. Um, the key is that children realize that they, that they have their rights and that they can be protect, protected. This is what that they can be respected, and that we empower them. And how, so, it's uh, also co our communication is also important. This is the reason why we uh, publish this uh, this uh, ch uh, children uh, children uh, friendly version, and we are trying to come closer. But it's not always. It's not only a commission. It's not only uh, institutions. It's also every one of us. We all all of us are responsible, and all of us have ownership of this. Yeah, It would be great to, to have you maybe next year or another year to actually evaluate also perhaps. They will evaluate every, yes. every two years. <laughs> <laughs> two years. Then let's meet again in two years' time here again for uh, an evaluation on how this strategy has been working and also perhaps have, you know, also your feedback here. So thank you so much for your introduction, for keynote remarks, and for being here with us in person. Can we perhaps give a warm applause to Mrs. Switcher? Thank you. Thank you so much. I will can stay, stay yes. here or there? Here. You can stay. Okay. <laughs> so now I'm very delighted to have another opening keynote speaker to introduce to you today. He's not with us in this room, however, he kindly uh, pre-recorded um, a, a video of his keynote speaker. This is Vit Rakuzan. He's the first uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of the Interior of the Czech Republic. As you all know, this Friday, the Czech Republic will hold, hold the presidency of the council for six months. Yeah, it's tomorrow indeed. And recently, the Czech presidency has uh, released its priority, which include the willingness to strive for the adoption of a pan-European tool for secure and trustworthy proving of identity, citizens' identity in Europe, the so-called European digital identity wallet, but also the creation of, of an efficient and fair data market, and also the final adoption of uh, a quite uh, To hot topic, the Digital Services Act, and the child sexual abuse proposal. Uh, so I will now um, invite you all to watch this pre-recording interview, um, uh, sorry, a speech of Mr. Rakuzan, who has kindly sent uh, it. So let's hear what Mr. Rakuzan has to say to us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the exponential development of digital world has made our lives much easier in so many ways. However, at the same time, it has also brought more risks, including for our children. Children spend more and more time on the internet, too often without parents' control. Not being aware of related threats, they may become victims very easily. Taking into account the vulnerability of children, we must keep pace with digital innovations and focus our efforts to respond rapidly and effectively to the risk incurred, including serious threats of child sexual abuse or cyber grooming. We must have proper tools for detection of harmful of illegal content. In order to improve safety of children in the virtual environment, we must also increase the protection of their rights on the internet, as well as to equip children with necessary digital skills so that they can benefit from what the digital world offers. Mm. I firmly believe that the renewed European strategy for a better internet for kids will help us to successfully tackle these challenges and it aims for accessible, age-appropriate and informative online 
content and services that are in children's best interests. It is also important that the strategy aims to support the implementation of existing as well as future measures to protect children online, including provisions on the discussed Digital Service Act and the proposal for a regulation laying down rules to prevent and combat child sexual abuse. I am convinced that all initiatives aimed at increasing safety of children on the internet as well as their di digital improvement deserves our due attention and joint efforts. That is why this topic will be high on the agenda also of the upcoming Czech Presidency of the Council of the EU. We would like to focus on improving fight against child sexual abuse in the context of new legislative process. I am well aware that this proposal is very complex and that the negotiations will not be easy. But we have to take into account the urgency to tackle this especially crime. Our aim will be to make as much progress as possible in negotiation this crucial file. At the same time, we will make every effort to ensure that the new system will be balanced and that obligations resulting from it will be comprehensible and realistic. During the Czech Presidency, we plan a number of expert meetings to be decided to the draft regulation. I also want to address the issue of combating child sexual abuse in the political debate at informal meeting of Ministers of Interior in July in Prague. I hope that together we will be able to fulfill our common goal to enhance prevention and investigations of child sexual abuse, as well as to improve the assistance and support for it, its victims. In this context, I am convinced that thanks to our mutual cooperation, we will succeed in making the Internet better and safer place for our children. Thank you for your attention.